All right, it's time. We're gonna get working on this. I'm super excited. As you can see, I got it from Ikea. You can see where, I'll, I'll make sure to put this stuff in the description box too, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the packaging off of this. And sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> and I am gonna get this sanded because you don't want any oils or manufactured like stuff uh, when you go to do the epoxy. So it's gonna need to be fully sanded. So I'm gonna get that going right now. just used a 220 grit sandpaper to kind of give it a, a sanding here and there because this was is a mass produced product there was some like lumpy spots around the sides and stuff so I just made sure to go through and clean all that up while I was sanding it but the main purpose for this is not only does it you know sand all the oils and stuff away but it's also going to kind of open up the pores of the wood as well so that way that epoxy can stick very nicely to our board when it's all said and done now i'm just going to use a dry cloth to kind of wipe everything off of the board itself because you don't want to use any type of moisture to wipe it off you could even use a tack cloth if you'd like to if you happen to have those if not just a dry cloth to kind of get any of that debris off of it but we definitely don't want any type of moisture to get trapped down into the grain of the wood. So don't spritz it with rubbing alcohol or anything like that. Just keep it dry. I'm going to figure out which side I want to be the top side. And I think it was this side I wanted it. Or maybe it was this one. They look the same, don't they? <laughs> but I I'm trying to figure out. I think I want, I think I want this side to be my top side. So I'm going to go ahead and get this side taped up. Of course, I'm just going to be using a painter's tape to do this process. Now this has a little bit of a curve to it, so I'm going to try my best to keep it with the curve. But if you look here on this particular board, it starts to curve about right there. So that's, I'm going to bring my tape back just a tab from that, that where it, it starts at the bottom here. So I'm just going to bring my tape back just a little bit off of that. And that's where I'm going to lay it down. And I'm just going to go around completely the outside of the tumbler here. Uh, and I'm just going to go completely around the outside of the cutting board. Hopefully I don't call it a tumbler anymore. Okay. <laughs> Your eyes do not deceive you. I switched, <laughs> I switched up my tape to this orange tape because the blue tape just wasn't sticking. And I found this orange tape has a lot more stickiness to the back. So I decided to use this. So you just want to make sure you use a nice sticky tape that will stick down to the wood. <laughs> All right, that's all taped up. I'm gonna go ahead and start gathering the supplies to kind of prop this up and all that. So I bought these uh, silicone mats here um, for this, well, I mean, for other projects too, but for this one in particular. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these laid out. Now to prop up my board, I'm gonna be using just some of my epoxy cups here, just the little measuring, the little medicine ones. Nothing too crazy. So I'll just take about four of them and we are propping it up because we're gonna be pouring that epoxy over top and we don't want it to be all stuck down and puddled on our mat so we're gonna prop it up so that way it can naturally fall off whatever it needs to and not get all puddled up on the board so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the painters tape side down and get it lined up which way I feel comfortable pouring I think I, I like this way just kind of get my cups together here now the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to take a level. Now you can get these levels at the Dollar Tree, I do believe, but uh, you just want to make sure that your piece is level. So that means whenever you go to level it, you want to make sure that little air bubble there is right in between the two black lines if you've ever used a, a level before. So this one has all kinds of all over the place. So I just got to make sure that's nice and level. So I'm going to do that really quick. So I need to come up a little bit on this side. So I'm just going to use a popsicle stick as a shim and I'm going to kind of prop it up just a little bit to get it more my bubble more into the middle. I'm going to take my popsicle stick and see if that helps out. I'm just going to lay it across here. Stick that back down. Okay, and I'm going to so I got it this way and I'm going to check this way. All right, that should do it. There we go. So the things I think I'm going to be adding into my epoxy to create this is I'm going to be using um, Illuminolite's epoxy dyes. The reason why I'm going to use epoxy dyes is because you don't have to use 
a lot of it to achieve the color that you want. It's just very small, very, very small amount. It goes a very long ways when it comes to this. So I think I'm going to use this to, to do up my, my blue. I don't know which blue I'm going to use yet. So there's an ocean blue and then like this blue bloom. So I don't know what, kind, maybe I'll use both, you know, maybe this, maybe this one more in the front and that one more in the back, making it look deeper in the back. So that's what I'm going to be using for that. And I'm even thinking about adding some mica powders and maybe even a little bit of sparkle dust into some of the blues just to kind of give it a little bit more like glimmer or shine because why not, right? <laughs> So for this particular board, I'm trying to figure out where, I, I mean, you could do anything you want to. I mean, you could have it fully on one like side and so that way you can lay out your food like off to each side here, you know, like that be your main focal piece. Um, you know, obviously you could do one side or the other. You could do the whole thing. I don't know if you want to. I mean, that that's completely up to you, but I'm going to leave half of the wood exposed, obviously. And I only want to do, I think I just want to do half the wood. And I might, depending on how this one looks, I might come back through and do a second wave over top. Kind of give it a little bit more dimension. So this may just be our first wave that we do. And then we'll have to come back through and do a second wave over top to kind of give it a little bit more dimension and everything. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my epoxy mixed up and all that stuff. So... From here on out, it's going to have to be a voiceover because I have to have my doors open and everything. I got to put the animals inside and all that jazz. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going and then we'll get this going. So I ended up uh, mixing together all together about 80 milliliters of epoxy. So 40 mLs of side A, 40 mLs of side B. I just really wanted to make sure that I was going to have enough epoxy because I didn't know how much really honestly I was going to need. I didn't know how big I wanted to go. So I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get this mixed up really well. Oh, and before we move on, I wanted to tell you guys that I'm actually using, so not only am I nervous because I've never done this before, but I went ahead and <laughs> I'm using a quick setting epoxy as well. Yes, I'm using I'm using, uh, what do I got over there? Uh, Flynn's sister's supply shop. I'm using her facet epoxy. So I, you know, so I really had to work quick with this. <laughs> but the reason why I did that was because I'm almost out of my, like my regular set and I need that, you know, so, and I didn't have enough for the project. So fast set it is, you know, it worked, it worked out fine. Luckily I, I can work pretty quick with this stuff. So as you see here, I'm going to divvy up. Let's see how much did I divvy up? I think it was about 30 mLs into those bigger cups. And into the smaller one, I don't need a lot. That's for the white. So the two cups there are for the blue. And this little one is just for the white that I'm going to be using. And there was a little bit of epoxy left over in my cup as well, which we will need to. So into one of those larger 30 mL cups, I'm going to add this. It's, it's just like a regular blue. It is translucent. So the less you use, the more translucent it will be. The more you use, the more opaque it will be. So I used quite a bit. One drop is, is quite a bit. And I also decided to add some SOC Sparkle Dust and Teal. And I tell you, I just love the way this turned out. It's so, so pretty. Just a very small amount. You know, I didn't want it too crazy. So I just put a little bit of the drop. Of coloring in there a little bit of the sparkle dust and now I'm gonna go ahead and get that stirred up but I don't I, I know it's hard to see here but this is just so pretty I really love that color now I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this ocean blue into my next container same thing the less you use the more translucent the more you use the more opaque and I used a bit more to make it more opaque and this is a beautiful kind of light blue you guys will see once I start to add it to the board and I decided to add a little bit of mica powder uh, indie blue mica powder into it and again it gave it just this extra shimmer to it that just is just gorgeous here it is all mixed up look at that look at that shine in there so pretty and then into my last little container I'm going to add the white I'm going to get that stirred up and then we're going to start adding this to our board so the first thing you want to do is take that clear epoxy that you have a little bit left over there. That's going to be where our waves are. So the clear portion, I'll show you as, as I get it layered on, but you just want to go ahead and kind of map out where your ocean is going to be. So this is essentially where your white caps are going to be once you go to blow everything back and, and make that wave look. 
and you want a decent amount because this is essentially where what you're going to be layering your white right in front of to to give us that that pronounced ocean look so you want you want quite a bit and the reason why we're doing that first is so that way it has time to level out and kind of settle where it needs to before we add the white next i'm going to add that lighter blue that we put together i'm just going to layer that right behind the clear there and you may have noticed you know i didn't prime my board with paint or anything doesn't really need it especially whenever you're using the specifically made dyes in your epoxy you shouldn't have to color your board any type of color before beforehand because this pretty much covers for you so now that the light is applied i'm going to go ahead and apply the dark blue behind it now after i got my epoxy laid down i'm going to go ahead and take my gloved finger and i'm just going to kind of smoosh everything around you know just kind of blend it just a little bit blending down into the clear a little bit taking that blue and blending it up into the dark now I really want to try to make sure that after I get my finger up into the dark that I don't bring it down too much into the light so you might have to switch up your fingers and all that but I am essentially just trying to help that epoxy kind of drape over that edge because this epoxy is pretty thick so it just needs a little bit of help getting around those edges there so I actually have two different types of fast setting epoxy sitting over there. I have Mr. Nola's fast setting and Jessica Flynn's fast setting epoxy. And the reason why I chose Jessica's is because it has a little bit more of an open time than, than uh, the Nola's fast set epoxy. So I felt more comfortable using that and the time frame that I needed because I know that the Nola's, I, it probably would have flash cured on me Pr pretty quick. That stuff cures fast. You gotta, you gotta work super quick with that. So I had a little bit more of an open time uh, with the Flint Sisters epoxy. So now that everything's all blended together, I'm going to take my white mixture and I'm going to place it down right. I want to try to get it right in front of the clear area that we made ourselves. So it's okay if you get it up into the clear a little bit, but you, you mainly want it more in front than anything else. So as you see, I added a few stripes of that white up into the blue and around the front, but then I ended up coming through with my cup and making sure that that beginning portion was going to be nice and frothy looking, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So once you go to blow it, you want it, that to be nice and thick and pronounced. So I just went ahead and took my cup and just pretty much poured the rest of it down right in the front there. And moving right along, I'm going to take a blow, my blow dryer. This is what I've always used because not only does it have a bit of heat, um, it also has the nice blowing feature, which I like. I'm just going to very gently take my waves and blow them back as far as I would like them. You can make them go all the way back. You can stop it just a little bit at the front. However you want this to look is completely up to you, but you just want to take that air and let it glide right across. As you can see, the, the waves kind of just getting pushed there. The reason why I didn't want to use a traditional heat gun when it came to doing this is because I was already using a fast setting epoxy and it was already starting to kind of warm up and, and get a little sticky for me. And I already knew that if I used a basic heat gun, it would it would probably really set this up a little too quick for me. It, it would start to flash here. So I was fine with my blow dryer for this. <laughs> So after you get those waves pushed back as far as you would like, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to take your gloved hand and you're going to make sure, I'll show you guys here in a second, you just want to come through and kind of wipe around the bottom to kind of make sure that everything is dripping over the way it should because you want that, full, that edge fully covered with this. There we go. I'm just going to take my finger and wipe it right along the bottom, right where that tape line meets, meets the board there. Now because I'm out in my garage and it's pretty warm out here, um, it was about two hours I was able to come back and kind of do anything else I wanted to do to it. So now is just the process of letting it sit here and cure before I can add another coat. Now, I, I know you guys see I have a little bit of epoxy on the end of the board there, but that's okay. Because all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and very gently rub that off. And you can't even see where that epoxy had landed there. Now, I... This this epoxy was just on the verge of being getting a little too hard, but I knew I wanted to add just one more line of the white around the front just to kind of make it a little bit more pronounced. So I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of the white that's left in that container and I'm going to add it right along the edge there. And I'll take my heat one last time, just very gently pushing it back, not too far, just a quick little just zhuzh of the, of the beginning there just to kind of make it, like I said, a little bit more pronounced. 
Then I'm gonna go ahead and take my torch and just gently come through and pop any little micro bubbles. And again, because I push everything around one more time, one last time I'll come through and wipe away any major excess that of epoxy that draped over the side there before I let this cure for a couple hours. Boy, I really, really love how this is turning out. It is just so pretty. I was so nervous to do this too. Now look at me. Now look at me. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't get too addicted to doing this, huh? All right, so now it is ready to get a second wave going so now I'm gonna go ahead and get my epoxy mixed up and we're gonna get that going so for the second wave we don't need that much epoxy I only did up about 60 mls for this one I'm gonna divvy up some into a little container again that's for the white portion and then the clear the rest of it is gonna be what we put you know behind it because we don't need any colorant this time around we already put our colorant down so this this time around it's just the wave and the clear epoxy so into the small container, I'm going to add my white, same white that we used the first time around, the white epoxy dye, and get that stirred up. So I'm just going to kind of take my finger and just visualize kind of where I want my wave to go, because again, I was freaking out a little bit, because, <laughs> you know, I've never, like I said, I've never done this, all right? <laughs> so now I'm going to take my clear epoxy again, and I'm just going to take that and swoop it around where I would like my, my second layer of waves to be. Then I'll just take the rest of that clear epoxy and start to fill in the rest of it so that way it's all nicely filled in just like we did the first time around. And I will go ahead and take my finger and make sure that there is no gaps uh, in this epoxy and make sure it starts to kind of flow over the edge like we want it to. Then we will take our white mixture and we will again just place it right in front of where that clear line is. It was a little difficult for me to see. I had to get down kind of like on the side to see it. But that's all you want to do is just add your, your clear line straight across. And I decided to add another little one across the pack. You can do however you want to do, you know. Again, just let your imagination flow when it comes to making this. This speech can look however you want it to look. <laughs> And again, we're going to take our heat gun or whatever you guys want to use. Again, I'm just going to use my blow dryer because I'm using a fast setting epoxy. And I'm going to start blowing my waves around and let those extend out as far as I would like them to. Then I will come through and use my torch to pop any little micro bubbles. And again, I'm going to let that sit there and cure for a few hours. But I think I want to do one more wave to kind of fix this area because I don't really like that. I really like this area. I like that. I don't want to touch that. But I think what I want to do to kind of fix this and right here is I think I'm just going to do like and then swoop it kind of like that. So this will be one wave right there and I think that'll kind of fix it and I think that's that's pretty much it I think that's probably all I'm going to do and then um, I'll probably put one more coat of epoxy over top so that way this line is straight so we'll see All right, it's the next morning and this is all dry and ready to have everything all peeled up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my table clean and we'll move on. All right, here we are. I see some of the tape lifted up already, but that's okay. But we need to get this all taken care of here. So what I've seen everybody else do, let's take a heat gun 
warm it up a little bit and then pull the tape back like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I had a little uh, window scraper there too in case I needed it, but I, I ended up not using it. So I all I pretty much did was take an actual heat gun and I just warmed up about one to two inches at a time and then pulled my tape up that way. And again, you don't want to leave your heat gun on one specific area for too long. All you wanna do is sweep motion back and forth and you see I, I take my, my heat gun and I, I kinda aim it away after the fact, but you definitely don't wanna leave it on for too long. If it starts to smoke or something starts to burn, you're warming it up too much. Just a little bit of heat goes a long way. So just gently warm it up, peel it back. And also make sure that you are storing your heat gun after you're done somewhere safe. I don't, want, I don't want you guys to get burnt or something to get burnt, okay? So be very careful with your heat gun once you're all done. So that was a lot easier than I anticipated. Uh, obviously, it needs to be sanded still, you know, there's some edges on it. But other than that, I mean, that was really, really easy. So all I have left to do is take an orbital sander and I'm going to sand on the back. I got to apply some oils to it. I may even apply some little bumpers to the back. So that's going to have to be a next weekend thing as far as this goes. But I think we got, I think we did pretty good so far. All right, we did it. We made our first cheese board. I'm going to call it a cheese board because honestly, I don't know how to say it the other way. Okay, so <laughs> not too bad. Okay, like I said, um, the only thing I have left to do is add its oils back to it, uh, give it a good sanding. I'm gonna have to have Jeff help me out with that. So we're gonna have to finish this up next Sunday together. So pretty easy, shouldn't take too long. But I love, let's see if I can get up in there. You can see the micas. And you can see a little bit of that sparkle dust coming through. So, so pretty, so much depth to it. So I have a tumbler with me today. I have my tutorial from Friday. It's so bright. <laughs> it is so, so bright. I absolutely had a blast making this though. Like these are just fun, just like just concepts where you just kind of go at it and you just kind of see where it kind of takes you with the tape and all that. and. You know, I had uh, this sketched out in my notepad for a while and I'm like, now is the time. <laughs> so I made that, but I also made a keychain to match it. I made up a keychain similar to what, like what we did last week. Made a keychain to go with it. Look at that. But I was thinking of doing a giveaway of the tumbler because I'm, I'm gonna keep the keychain I'm going to keep the keychain for myself. I love the colors, so bright. But I was thinking of doing a giveaway just for the tumbler itself. If you guys are interested, if you would like to win it, just go ahead and leave me a comment down below of like your favorite summer crafts. I know not everybody does uh, tumblers and stuff. Maybe it is tumblers. You know, what's your favorite summer tumbler? What's your favorite summer craft? It doesn't have to be anything too crazy. Just let me know down below and I will pick a winner next Sunday. All right, so now that our cheese board is pretty much almost done, we just have a little bit more things to do together. I'm gonna give you a hint on what we're gonna get started on next. <laughs> Some of you might be like, what is this? Paper, 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 paper towel holders. There we go. Okay, that, that's your hint, okay? We'll, we'll see where it takes us from there, all right? So you have to tune in next Sunday, not only to see who wins the tumbler, but to see what we're gonna be doing with these, all right? <laughs> but I hope, I think that's gonna do it for me today. There we go. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day, an amazing rest of your week, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.